Good morning, church. Good morning, church. Let's rise to our feet like living souls and praise God from whom all blessings flow. Oh, worship the King, all glorious above. Oh, gratefully sing his wonderful love. Our shield and defender, the ancient of days, pavilioned in splendor and girded with praise. Oh, tell of his might, oh, sing of his grace, whose robe is the light and canopy space. His chariots of wrath, the deep thunder clouds form. And dark is his path on the wings of the storm. You alone are the matchless king. To you alone be all majesty. Your glories and wonders what tongue can recite. You breathe in the air. You shine in the light. O oh, measureless might, ineffable love, while angels delight to worship above. Thy mercies, how tender, how firm till the end, our maker, defender, redeemer, and friend. You alone, you alone. tongue can recite, you breathe in the air, you shine in the light. Let's sing that chorus again. Give him your praise. You alone are the matchless king. To you alone be all majesty. Your glories and wonders what tongue can recite. You breathe in the air, you shine in the light. Oh, worship the King. Oh, worship the King, oh, glorious above. Oh, gratefully sing his wonderful love. Our shield and defender, the ancient of days, pavilioned in splendor and girded. We thank you, Father God, for your salvation in Christ Jesus for the bright and shining day. We pray in the name of Jesus. Amen. Please be seated. All right. Wonderful. Well, good morning, everyone. All right. Uh, I just want to say thank you so much for being here. Uh, thank you for being in your place, uh, everybody. And thank you if you were here as a visitor with us. Uh, as you'll see here and hear about multiple times today, we have a visiting group with us uh, from MIT. And so uh, super grateful that they're here. They're going to be a huge blessing to our church. And uh, looking forward to hearing uh, from Brother Pattison there. But if you're here uh, as a guest for the first time, I want to encourage you to stop by our Welcome Center. We want to know how to pray for you and, um, and connect with you here this week. I want to remind you guys, next week, we're going to have another luncheon, okay? Uh, so if you, if you missed out uh, on the food, come back. Uh, we're going to be doing uh, uh, some Hispanic food next week, and so uh, changing it up. Uh, so it's going to be donation-based, so come to the 11 o'clock, stay afterwards, um, invite a friend, and there'll be a blessing there. Uh, during that service, before we go, we're going to be observing communion next week. And so uh, really take some time this week and uh, come ready and, and examine your heart and come ready for that. I want to talk to you guys uh, just for really quick about what we've been doing for VBS Outreach. As you guys know, uh, we've been going to schools during dismissal time, and I just want to say thank you everyone that's been praying because uh, the Lord has given us a great measure of favor. I've been able to talk with many parents, teachers, um, like uh, public safety officer people on the, <laughs> on the street right there, and uh, we've actually been to 11 schools, okay? Uh, and so uh, we've, we've given out hundreds and hundreds of flyers at the school. Yeah. 
Uh, last time I checked, we already had six families, like new families, pre-registered, okay? And so uh, we're, we're really looking forward to a great time there. Continue to pray. If you want to be a part of the outreach efforts, um, there's a place for you, okay? We've got a lot of opportunities coming up, different times. We're going to give you a little sheet for that. Um, but uh, talk to me. I want to I wanna help you uh, take part in that. Uh, Pastor, got some more announcements now. All right, good morning. Oh, come on. You can do better than that. Good morning. Good morning. All right. How many of you are glad it's cooler in here than it is outside, right? And uh, so we're glad and, uh, that we can at least be in here and worship the Lord. We had a great first service. You're in for a treat. Uh, we do have some guests, and we'll introduce them here in just a few moments, but we're really glad that you are here today. I have a couple other quick announcements. Uh, one is for all the men. Uh, we are in the process of recruiting men to help us on our security team. And again, we say this all the time, you don't need to be a third degree black belt or be menacing looking, but if you were willing to help us, eyes and ears, that would be a great thing. It doesn't become too much of a labor for just a couple of guys every week. We have multiple services, so we could use your help. Our goal is not to keep people out of the service, but again, put people on a rotation. So we're having a meeting today uh, right after the service. So if you'll stay, we, we have pizza, we'll put it in your belly so you can stay and eat and listen. And uh, we want to give you a couple of things, introduce you to some new leadership, and uh, just uh, get the, the, the process started, and we'll give you everything that you need. But we really would appreciate if you would uh, pray about that and be willing to help us with that. We've had good response so far. After the service, we'll remind you. But uh, we're going to end up having her meeting in here. We'll have food in that room next door. Um, and so we'll remind you afterward. But guys, I hope you'll be a part uh, of that. And then let me just mention this to you. Of course, VBS, and I think Joy Gibson's going to come and say a little bit more about that. Um, and we're, we're really doing well. Um, here's what you can do, everybody can do, be praying every day for Vacation Bible School. It's about four weeks away, and uh, she'll give you some more opportunities here in a moment. But add VBS to your prayer list. Secondly, and most of you know, the first week of August, uh, we have a group of our young adults that are going to be going to Guyana on a mission trip, and so they're going to be working with our missionaries in Guyana, uh, Greg and Wendy Mann, and they're way out in the jungle off of tributaries. The Manns have been there 20 years, started a lot of churches, and our group's going to be just helping them as they're doing some family camps, some VBSs, and so we have six uh, adults that are going. So thank God uh, they're all doing pretty well, and financially they're ready to go. What we would like to do is on July 14th, that's four weeks from today, okay, July 14th, we would like to receive a, a special love offering for Guyana that we can send with them so that we can show up there uh, and say, look, our church in New York not only is sending manpower, but we want to be a blessing to you. They can use help. Uh, a couple of Christmases ago, one of our projects was to, to help them remodel one of their church buildings, and we did. And so there's always needs. And so you can have a part in uh, this Guyana trip. Uh, by giving. So July 14th. Now you say, I want to give before that. That's fine. Just get an envelope and put Guyana trip, uh, love offering Guyana, something to that extent, and it'll go toward it. But definitely by July 14th, we want to do that. We're sending or we're taking a, a lot of children's curriculum down there with us, Bible curriculum that they're carrying with them. And so we just want to be a huge blessing uh, to uh, the mans and to the work that's going on there. So please mark that down, if you will, on your calendar. We'll be reminding you about it in the next couple weeks. And then our missionaries this week um, are the Webbers, uh, Chuck and Tammy, and they are in Mongolia. And uh, uh, the Pattersons know the Webbers and spent some time in Mongolia. We're just there. He'll say maybe something about that. The uh, Webbers, uh, we have the privilege of partnering with them all the way across the planet. Uh, they're doing well. We thank God for, for that. Be praying for them. We encourage you to pray for our missionaries all the time. If you don't have a list of our missionaries, our prayer cards are out there. Pick it up. It says Pray 2024. It's got all of our missionaries listed. Put it on your refrigerator. Put it on your mirror. Put it in your Bible. Pray for them. And if you do that, um, you know, you have a part in helping their ministries. But we try to highlight a missionary every week. So be praying for the Webbers on Wednesday night when you check your emails. Um, you'll get their updated report and letter, and you'll be able to read through that and see what's going on in their ministry. If you 
would like those reports and you don't get those emails, just let them know at the Welcome Center and, and they'll take your info. We'll make sure that you get on that automated uh, send out. So pray for the Webbers, if you would, uh, this week. We're really glad that you're here. Mr. Joy Gibson's going to uh, tell us a few more uh, opportunities, possibilities for VBS. Good morning. Um, we are so excited as, we get as we're getting ready for VBS. Uh, flyers have been going out, flying out. Ha -ha. Um, the interns, Pastor James, and many of you adults after the different times have gone to the schools. Um, the, the been going out at dismissal time. And so really, I think that Brother James said that probably a 1,000 of these have gone out already at 11 schools. And um, tomorrow and Tuesday is the last big push at the schools. Um, after that, there's, there's a schedule here uh, going out to parks, to the subways, on the street, door to door, everything else. We, we really have a lot of these to get out and. The response has been great. It's been amazing to see that many have already registered. So praise the Lord for that. Um, out on the uh, in the registration area, there is a sign up sheet that you could sign up to receive text messages about any times that we go out, and then also a prep schedule, so you can know. You know, put this. Be praying if nothing else. Be praying. Um, grab a stack of, of invitations and pass those out on your street. Put them indoors. Um, if you're out and about and you see. You see uh, parents, especially, um, if you see them with their kids, that's good. It's best not to approach children, you know, one-on-one, -on -one, but, but um, you know, especially, I mean, like your kids could give it to other kids. That's awesome. But uh, my husband, as wonderful as he is, has had people tell him that that's creepy. So let's not do that. <laughs> okay. But, um, but give them to parents and, and be sure and uh, just, you know, pass 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 these out and invite people, the Lord knows, and will bring people and is bringing people already. So another thing is that we we have a schedule here for decorating and office office work here in the in the building throughout the month of July, um, starting July 6th, and there's a schedule on here. Basically, um, I'll be here Saturdays, Tuesdays, and Thursdays on repeat through the month of July, uh, increasing as it goes along, lots of little things to do. And so um, there's a schedule there. Another thing that you can be you can participate in. People have asked, how can I help? How can I help? Um, we want to have a nice supply of um, just to pull from for different supplies that we need for decorating. So I have here a list. There's like duct tape, poster board, and foam core board. Um, we need lots of tablecloths, lots of color. You know, this is so much cheaper than a whole like bucket of paint. Um, so, so we'll use these tablecloths and, you know, just lots of inexpensive ways to add lots of color and pop of color. So uh, Brother Allen and I are both very much looking forward to having a good supply of things to use uh, around the building here. Um, we'll need your help as well if you're able. Let me know if, some, if you would like to help and you see on there, there is nothing that fits my schedule. You know what? I will adapt to your schedule. So just... Let us know, and uh, we'd be glad to have your help. This is such a, it's a group effort, and the main, the main power that we need is through prayer. Please pray for us. Pray for all, uh, pray for us, all of us together, that we'll be walking in the Spirit and willing to just give of ourselves um, as Jesus gave himself for us, and that we'll see kids and parents come to the Lord, new families, excited to see what God will do. So, all right. And again, that is something all of us can do, uh, pray. And I asked you a few weeks ago how many of you would pray every day. I'm not going to ask you if you've been doing that, but I hope that you will be doing that. And if you haven't, please start. And, uh, you know, anything that God loves and God is for, Satan is against. And so you, we cannot expect, wow, we've, we've been to 11 schools and we've gotten a lot of the word out and we're planning and... It, it, you know, we can't be ignorant that it's not going to be without some spiritual warfare. So, uh, you know, the good thing is, you know, when we fight, we fight. When we pray, God fights. And so we need to pray. So if you'll pray for Vacation Bible School, pray for the Guyana mission trip, pray for our teens as they're going uh, to the ark later in the month of August. A lot of stuff going on, uh, but everybody can have a part. 
uh, through prayer. We're really glad that you're here today. Yesterday, we had a memorial service for uh, George Pagan, and uh, many of you remember George, and we have some uh, uh, fa- uh, friends, like family, that are here, and they were here yesterday, and we're really honored that you came to the service today. We've got a lot of guests and, and folks, uh, snowbirds and folks uh, back and people we haven't seen for a while. And let me just uh, reiterate what uh, Brother James said. Please stop at the Welcome Center if you're visiting. We're really glad you're here. And uh, leave us a name, leave us an email, leave us a contact uh, number. We're not, we're not going to harass you, but we want to just uh, stay in contact with you, let you know all the great things going on here and be praying for you. So I uh, hope that you'll take time to do that uh, today. Today, in the midst of everything else, uh, but we, it's such a highlight, we want to make sure we do it. Um, and so today we are going to recognize our 2024 high school and college and above graduates. And so we're going to do that right now. <clears throat> now, again, look, if you weren't on this list, I apologize uh, in advance. And for weeks and weeks and weeks and weeks and weeks, we've been asking. And so um, please know nothing was intentional. And sometimes people say, you know, my, my child graduated from, you know, um, pre-K or from, you know, eighth grade. And those are all big accomplishments. But we just, we just, can't do that. Uh, so we want to make it these big monumental graduations and getting through high school and then beyond that is, is, a, is a big accomplishment. And so uh, we want to recognize these students today. So here's what I'm going to do. When I call your name, there's five of you, I want you to stand up and stay standing, okay? Will you do that for me? So we're going to uh, introduce them to you. So um, I guess um, let's just start. How about let's do uh, 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 Yasmin Andrea Hassan Torres. So stand up, Yasmin. <laughs> <laughs> All right, so Yasmin graduated from Queens College with a bachelor's in elementary and early childhood education, grades one to six, and a bachelor's in studio art, and her plans will be to pursue a master's in teaching English to speakers of other languages, K through 12, so congratulations to you. <laughs> Stay up. Great, 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 great. All right, our next is also a college grad, and that is Miss Stephanie Seminatori. Stand up, Stephanie. All right. <laughs> and Stephanie graduated from Queens College uh, uh, with a master's degree in English education, grades 7 through 12. And her next step is to continue college, furthering her education, and moving up that food chain, if you will, in the education field. And so we're excited about that. But it's been a big year for you, you know, profession of faith, baptism, graduation. We're really excited for you. Congrats, Stephanie. So those are our college grads, all right? So let's do uh, our uh, high school here. We have Miss Alondra Andrade. Where's Alondra? There she is, yes. High school graduate, Urban Assembly Academy of Government and Law, and that's great, and uh, we're excited about that and plans to be determined, but we kind of want to say congratulations to you, Alondra. And then we have Miss Hannah Gibson. There's Hannah back there. (laughs) So Hannah... Hannah graduated from Abeka Academy, and this fall she plans to attend Pensacola Christian College to study a Bible degree in youth ministry, so we're excited for her. And then last but not least is Mr. Jonathan Fairhurst right here. And Jonathan graduated from Brooklyn School for Math and Research uh, with a Regents Diploma. And uh, what's next for him? He is planning to attend Cedarville University uh, to study electrical engineering with a Bible minor. And so we're excited for him. (laughs) So, Brother James is coming around. We have a gift for you. It's just what you wanted, another book, right? And, uh, <laughs> but it's something that we believe would be an encouragement to you, and we've got a little inscription inside on behalf of our church, and uh, we just want you to know that I know it takes a lot of hard work, a lot of effort, and uh, you, you know that better than, than uh, um, anybody, but uh, we want you to know that we're proud of you. It's a, a big accomplishment, and uh, our prayer for you as a church is that you will continue to pursue 
that you'll continue to, to do those things that God wants you to do. And you're going to hear a little bit about that today, but, you know, God has a plan for all of our lives, and He has been a part in getting you to where you are today, and I hope that you'll keep Him at the center of your life so that He can take you to those next steps. And uh, just know you, you, you're never alone. Obviously, you know the Lord, and you've got your family who've, who've invested in so much in you, but you've got a church family who loves you, and we'll be praying for you, and if you ever need somebody to get to have your back, you just call us up, and we'll bring a bunch of people to come help you out, all right? And we want you to know you're not alone. So why don't we do this? Would you as a church, while they're standing, would you just bow with me, and let's pray for each of these graduates today, and uh, let's try to prolong this as much as we can to embarrass them, all right? But let's pray knowing that it's God that's the one that helps them. Lord, I'm so thankful for uh, each of these ladies and for Jonathan. And uh, I just pray, Lord, that you would uh, continue to bless them. It's been a season of accolades and uh, completion, and that's a great thing. And, Lord, I pray that you would just uh, help them in the days uh, to come as they process, as they look back and realize, Lord, uh, what an accomplishment it is. But, Lord, I pray that you would just help them to stay close to you. The greatest uh, effort that we can make, the greatest accomplishment in our life is to draw nigh to you. And we know that in doing that, you'll draw close to us. And so I pray that in their daily lives, as they work, as they go to school, uh, Lord, some will be here local, some will um, uh, be going uh, miles away. I just pray that their relationship with you would only deepen, would only grow. And then, Lord, I know that as you have gotten them to this point, you will continue to lead them uh, to those next steps and stages in their life. And so, Lord, I pray you'll do that. Bless uh, each of them. We pray for uh, Jasmine and Stephanie as they're moving forward. And, Lord, uh, uh, maybe uh, further education and, and in their profession and their fields. Bless them. We pray for Alondra and Hannah and Jonathan, Lord, uh, as they uh, take these next steps, uh, whether it be schooling and college or, or career, I just pray that you would just guide and direct them and bless them in a special way. Lord, we, we uh, also would be remiss if we didn't mention moms and dads and, and siblings and grandparents and people uh, that really had a part in helping them get through uh, to this day. And so, Lord, bless them. And as it'll be a change for, for some of these family members, as change happens in life, I just pray that you would give them wisdom and encourage them in this time and help us as a church to always stand with them and pray for them and be a blessing, we pray. So God bless uh, each of our graduates, and we'll be sure to give you the thanks and praise for it. We ask these things in Jesus' name. Amen. God bless you. Let's give them a big hand one more time today. <clears throat> Maybe see them. All right. At this time, we're going to stand everybody, and we're going to continue to worship the Lord in song. We're going to sing, Great Are You, Lord, the third song in the slides. You give life, you are love, you bring life. Darkness, you give hope, you restore every heart that is broken. Great are you, Lord. It's your breath in our lungs, so we pour out. Praise, we pour out our praise. It's your breath in our lungs. So we pour out our praise to you only. You give life, you are the
sing together and all the earth will shout your praise our hearts will cry these bones will see Let's sing that one more time, last time. And all the earth will shout your praise. Our hearts will cry. These bones will sing. Great are you, Lord. It's your breath. On a hill far away stood an old wrong sing with me the emblem of suffering and shame and I love that I cross where the dearest and best for a world of lost sinners was slain so I'll cherish the old rugged cross Till my trophies at last I lay down. I will cling to the old rugged cross and exchange it someday for a crown. Oh, the old rugged cross, so despised by the world has a wondrous attraction for me. For the dear Lamb of God left his glory of all to the So I'll cherish the old rugged cross till my trophies at last I lay I will cling to the old rugged cross and exchange its 
someday for a crown in the old rugged cross stained with blood so divine a wondrous beauty I see for it was on that old cross Jesus suffered and died to pardon and sanctify me so I cherish the old rugged cross till my trophies at last I lay down I will cling to the old rugged cross and exchange it someday Let's sing that last verse, last. To the old rugged cross, I will ever be true. Its shame and reproach gladly bear. Then he'll call someday to my home far away, where his glory forever I'll share. So I cherish the old rugged cross till my trophies at last I lay down. I will cling to the old rugged cross and exchange it someday for a Father God, we thank you for the precious blood of Jesus. Lord, we will cling to that cross, Lord, for in it is hope. You are our hope, Lord. All of our dreams, everything made new in you, O God, all of our aspirations bundled in you and only in you. Lord Jesus, come soon. Lord, we pray for the speakers today, for visitors, Lord, to the church, Lord, and may they leave with joy in their hearts, with a refreshing, Lord, and a reminder of your goodness, your grace, and your salvation and mercy in Christ Jesus. And in that day of days, Lord, when you return to judge the earth and the heavens, oh Lord God, when you shake the earth and the heavens, may you find us faithful in that day. We pray these things in the name of Jesus. Amen. Amen. All right. Well, you're in for a treat today. We have a, a, a special speaker here, and we have a special guest group that are here with us this week. Uh, MIT, which represents Missionaries in Training, is a group that has come for the last several years uh, for uh, about four or five days every summer to do ministry here in New York City. And these are young people from, I was told, all, uh, all over the place, Alabama, Ohio, uh, Texas, and uh, they've come together for a two-week period of time. And uh, they've come last week, did a lot of training, and uh, uh, learned a lot of instructional things, flew to New York, and uh, this week they'll be out in different neighborhoods working with different uh, ministries, uh, tomorrow with the Tinsleys, and uh, they're here as well with our church. And uh, matter of fact, half of the group is downstairs right now, and they're doing a whole big a blowout kids program right now. So if you got kids and you want them to go down, uh, make sure they get down there so they don't miss that. And uh, we're really glad that they're willing and, and wanted to be a help and be a part today. They're going to sing, and their uh, leader, director today is Brother Bill Patterson. And uh, Brother Bill Patterson is not a stranger here. I've uh, been in ministry for many, many years. He is the president uh, of Mount Abiram Baptist Mission International, which is a mission agency that has missionaries all around the world. Uh, he is uh, also connected, and I made the mistake today, but he is uh, Joy Gibson's brother, John Gibson's brother-in-law, and uh, his mother is Mrs. Becky Patterson. Of course, uh, his uh, father who passed away a few years ago, uh, Dr. Mike Patterson, we support uh, uh, Miss Becky Patterson. She's a missionary in Mexico. She'll actually be here next Sunday. She'll share a word about what's going on in Mexico and uh, just a family that's really dedicated to the Lord and God has used them for many, many years. And uh, Brother, Brother Bill's been here many times. And uh, when I realized they were going to be here Sunday, I just asked if he would do us the honor of speaking today. You're in for a real treat. I heard him the first hour 
And uh, so I hope your hearts will be open, and I believe he'll be a blessing to you today and let God speak to your heart. So he's going to come after the group sings for us. Thanks for being here. Oh, what a privilege, what a joy to be back here at All Nations Baptist Church. I'm always glad when someone allows me to come and visit a church. I'm almost surprised when they allow me to come back a second time. And especially where my sister and my brother-in-law are. I know you must love them very much to allow me to be here today, and so I am quite honored and thankful for the privilege of getting to be here at this church. I must tell you the truth. I love a church that strives to reach all nations. I, I have a great passion and a joy uh, for meeting people from other countries that have other cultures, that speak other languages. And uh, I am a missionary, I'm a Bible translator, and I must tell you that coming here is such a treat to me. So hearing you speak in different languages, oh boy, that's just my cup of tea. I really like that a lot. I'm going to ask you to open up your Bible, please, to the book of 1 Timothy, chapter number 1. 1 Timothy, chapter 1. While you're turning there, just a little bit about the group that you've heard from right now. We have a group called Missionary in Training. Uh, every year we come to New York City for the past eight years, other than one year during COVID, we were not able to come. And the purpose is to train young people who are interested in reaching others with the gospel of Jesus Christ. Uh, we believe that God has called us all to minister, that God has called us to, to take the gospel to others. And so we want to be a part of that, and we believe that by training young people that we can help them to prepare for a lifetime of service to God. And so would you please pray this week? Tomorrow morning they're going to be hearing some, from some very famous 
preachers and teachers. So please pray for Pastor Dan Schaefer. Some of you are familiar with him. He'll be speaking to them tomorrow morning, as well as Brother David Tinsley. Some of you are familiar with him. So please pray for Brother David, and then pray for the group, and pray that Miss Karen uh, will, um, will make chocolate chip cookies. Um, very good. All right. Yeah, some of you have had her chocolate chip cookies before. Yes, I've been blessed as well. So let's go to 1 Timothy chapter number 1. 1 Timothy 1. I'll begin reading in verse number 12, and we'll go down through verse number 17. The Bible says, And I thank Christ Jesus, our Lord, who hath enabled me, for that he counted me faithful, putting me into the ministry, who was before a blasphemer and a persecutor and injurious, but I obtained mercy because I did it ignorantly in unbelief. And the grace of our Lord was exceeding abundant with faith and love, which is in Christ Jesus. This is a faithful saying and worthy of all acceptation, that Christ Jesus came into the world to save sinners, of whom I am chief. Howbeit, for this cause I obtain mercy, that in me first Jesus Christ might show forth all long suffering for a pattern to them which should hereafter believe on him to life everlasting. Now unto the King eternal, immortal, invisible, the only wise God, be honor and glory forever and ever. Amen. Let's look to the Lord in prayer. Our Heavenly Father, I pray that you would be honored and glorified through all that is said and done here today. Lord, I pray that you would speak to our hearts. I pray that you would enable us, Lord, to accomplish your purposes. And Lord, I pray also that your word would minister to our hearts and lives. Lord, I'm certain that in a group this size, there are some who have come with heavy hearts, with great needs. And Lord, I pray that you would help every one of those needs and that, Lord, your will would be accomplished. Thank you, Father, for the opportunity that we have to be here today. In Jesus' name I pray, amen. Here in this passage, we read the testimony of the Apostle Paul. And as Paul begins this book, writing to his young son in the faith, to Timothy, he starts off by reminding Timothy of what God had done in his life. The conversion of Saul to becoming the great Apostle Paul is an amazing story of God's power. We find a man that if you were to have met him at the beginning, you would have never thought that God could use someone like that. And then when you saw what God had done, this transformation in the life of the Apostle Paul, you would have been amazed at the great power of our God. Paul here writes concerning something that perhaps you might have asked yourself. Perhaps you posed this question. Why did God save me? I hope you realize that uh, of all the people that live on earth and all of the cultures speaking multiple languages, living in remote places, I am of all men most grateful that God allowed me to come to know Jesus Christ as my personal Savior. There are many people who, who live their entire life and they never once hear a clear presentation of the gospel. They're not presented with the Bible. They do not know that there is a God in heaven that loves them, that desires for them to come into a saving relationship with him. They, they have no idea that God has plans for their lives. They have no idea that God loves them and that God wants to spend eternity with them. They don't know that. And so for me to have come into that knowledge, I am a very blessed person. I am very grateful for that privilege of coming to know God as my Lord and to know Jesus Christ as my Savior. But why would God save me? Well, the immediate and obvious answer will, would, of course, be because God loves me. And by the way, God does love us. There's a phrase that I've tried to learn in several different languages and I would like to tell you what that phrase is. It's the phrase, God loves you. In Hindi, that phrase would be, Prabhu Parmeshwara Kopyar Kartache. In Telugu, Dievuru Mimulu No Premo Tsutsunaru. In Thai, Prajao Rogtan. In Mongolian, Borhan Tan Tairte. In Russian, Bog Lyubet Tevya. In Romanian, Dumnezeu Te Yubishte. In Ukrainian, Bog Lyubet Tebe. In, in Chinese, Shangdi Aini. 
in Lithuanian, Dievas Mili Tave, in Tagalog, Mahal Kanan Dios, in Nahuatl, Totatin Mitzniki, in Mixtec, Diosiki Ebe, Indra Shindra Yo, in Hebrew, Elohimo Hevotcha, in Greek, Theos Agapasu, in Maya, Dios Nohoch to Kaani, Dios Yakumaech, in Mam of Guatemala, Akman Dios Inchkontia, in Quichua of South America, Dios Cantacuyan, in German, Gott Lip Dick, in Italian, Dio Tiama, in Catalan, Deo Te Estima, in French, Deo Se Me Vu, in Spanish, Dios Te Ama, in English, God Loves You. Amen. I don't know about you. Amen. Praise God. I don't know about you, but aren't you glad that there is a God in heaven that loves me, Amen. loves you? And yet, God loves us so much that he chose a plan for our life. Not only did he choose a plan for our life, but he had specific goals in mind when he saved us. And I would like for us to look into this passage today, and I believe that we will find that God had at least three goals in mind when he saved us. Paul writes about the first in verse number 13 when he says this who was before a blasphemer and a persecutor and injurious, but I obtained mercy because I did it ignorantly in unbelief. Now, there's a phrase that the Apostle Paul likes to use here, and it's the phrase, I obtained mercy. And by the way, that phrase is a reference to that moment in Paul's life when he came to a saving knowledge of Jesus Christ and accepted God as his Savior. This is a key word. He's going to use this same phrase several times in this passage. When you read, I obtained mercy, that is Paul saying, this is that moment when God saved me. But did you notice what Paul was before God saved him? Notice that the Apostle Paul writes, who was before a blasphemer. What exactly is blasphemy? Blasphemy is attributing to the devil that which God does. Or it could also be attributing to God that which the devil does. In the book of Job, chapter number 1, we're introduced to a man who had many possessions. He had ten children. He was a very wealthy man. Satan comes to God and he says, God, you've put a fence around him. You've protected him. I can't do anything against Job. God, I want to harm Job. Let's see then if he still praises you. And God says, okay, I'll remove the fence of protection. And so the devil comes and he destroys all that Job has. In a single day, Job lost everything, including his ten children. His wife comes to him and says, Job, why don't you curse God and die? Now, who was behind all of the destruction? That was the devil. The devil wanted Job to curse God. That's what the devil intended. And Job's wife says, blaspheme God, curse God, and die. Job said, the Lord gave, the Lord took away. Blessed be the name of the Lord. He said, I'm not, going to, I'm not going to blaspheme God. I'm not going to curse God. You see, blasphemy is a terrible sin when sometimes we attribute it to God that which actually the devil has done, or we don't give God the praise for what he has done in our life. We get a new job, and it's like, yes, look at this. I got this by the sweat of my brow. I got this because I'm such a hard worker. And we don't realize that it was by God's grace that we obtained that new position. Can I just say this? Blasphemy is not giving God the glory he deserves. And Paul says, I was definitely a blasphemer. Not only that, Paul uh, admits, he says, I was a persecutor. See, Paul hated Christians. He would love to have found people like you, Christian people in a good church, reading the Bible, studying the Bible, come and make your lives impossible. After the first service this morning, I met a lady and she said, Brother Bill, my family was in the second generation who knew Christ in our country. My own family was greatly persecuted. Many of us in this room may not know what persecution is. But can I tell you that persecution is a very real life 
for people all over the world who do not enjoy the liberties that you and I have here in the United States of America. Paul says, I was a persecutor, but not only that, he says, I was injurious. What does that mean? He loved to pick fights, okay? He was the epitome of the playground bully. He loved to make life difficult for anybody. He was that guy that was like, okay, let's fight. You know, within 30 seconds of meeting this guy, you're, you're, you know, he, he's trying to pick a fight with you. He just wants to get up in your face. Doesn't matter what it is you have to say, he's going to take the opposite view. He's going he's to fight you for anything he can. That's the way the Apostle Paul was. He was a very bad man. He was that neighbor that makes your life impossible. He was that brother-in-law that you wish... Well, never mind. Uh, he, he was that person who causes you no end of grief, okay? Now, I have a perfect brother-in-law, John Gibson, so I'm obviously, obviously not talking about him, okay? So Paul is writing here, and he says, why did God save me? Number one, watch this, watch this. God saved me to change me. You know why God saves people? God saves people because he wants to change us. Paul says, before, I was a blasphemer, I was a persecutor, I was injurious. Oh, but now my life has totally changed. My life is totally different. Oh, isn't that wonderful that God changes us? You know, some people think that first they have to change. You know, they have to get rid of all the sin. They have to stop doing all these kinds of stuff. They have to start doing a whole bunch of this list of stuff. And then they can come to God. That's not the way God works. God says, hey, listen, what I want you to do is to come to me just the way you are. I'll change you because you can't change yourself. Now, you might think that you can go to a 12-step program and you're going to come out a different person. But let me tell you something. I know the one who can really change. Amen. He can change in ways that no 12-step program ever thought about being able to change us. And if you and I have been saved for any length at all, we know by our own personal testimony just how much God can change us. Can you imagine where you would be today without God? Let's imagine that you'd never gotten saved. Let's imagine you'd never come to know Jesus Christ as your personal Savior. Where would you be today? What would you be doing right now? Can I be honest with you? I have no idea. I don't even know. I've been saved so long, I cannot fathom what my life would be without Christ. I, I have no idea where I would be. I have no idea what kind of life I would have. I, I do not know what I would be today without Jesus Christ. I am so grateful for the grace of God that reached me. But Paul writes here, not only does he write that God wants us, God wants us to be saved so that he can change us, he explains how that happens. Look at the tools that God uses. Now, we read about mercy in verse number 13, but look at verse 14. And the grace of our Lord was exceeding abundant with faith and love. Here we see four things. God uses mercy, grace, faith, and love to change us. God uses that mercy. That's, that's that unmerited favor. That's when he doesn't give us the punishment, you know, that, that we deserve. That's, that's mercy. He gives us grace. That means he gives us, he gives us special gifts that we don't deserve, uh, blessings that we haven't earned. He gives us those. And then he talks about faith. Oh, faith is where God begins to change us and, and he enables us to please him because the Bible says without faith it's impossible to please him. And then the Bible says that God uses love. And by the way, love is an, an incredible motivator. Love can motiva, motivate us to do God's will. The Bible says in 2 Corinthians 5, 14 that Paul, the apostle Paul writes, he says, the love of Christ constrains me. Do you, do you see that here in the Bible, as we read, all that God did in the Apostle Paul's life was for a purpose. I want you to see to what level God changed Paul. Now, before we get into this, I want to put in a little brief parenthesis here. I want you to imagine just for a minute that person that you would say is the baddest person you've ever met. Pardon the, gr the grammatical error there, okay? The worst person person you've ever met, the person who was the absolute greatest thorn in your flesh. Now, 
in those eyes of faith that you have, and I'm sure you have those eyes of faith, imagine that person coming behind this pulpit one day and preaching God's word with passion and love for God. That would be the level of change that God wrought in the life of the Apostle Paul. Because verse number 12 says this. This is awesome. He says, And I thank Christ Jesus our Lord, who hath enabled me, for that he counted me faithful. That means he added up the whole sum and he said, You know what? Uh, Paul, let's see. You have a zero plus a zero plus a zero plus a zero, but I'm adding the 100. Now you got a 100. You're ready to go. That's the way it works. It's not because of anything I've done. He counted me faithful, and then he writes, putting me into the ministry. Wow. Can I just say, that, that's incredible. What an amazing transformation. The Bible talks about this transformation in several places. The Apostle Paul wrote in the book of Romans, chapter number 12. He says, I beseech you, therefore, brethren, by the mercies of God, that you present your bodies a living sacrifice, wholly acceptable unto God, which is your reasonable service. And be not conformed to this world. Listen to this. But be ye transformed by the renewing of your mind, that ye may prove what is that good and acceptable and perfect will of God. Did you see that part there? Transformed by the renewing of your mind. That's what God wants to do in us. He wants to transform us. Why did God save me? So he could change me. He wanted to change me. He, he didn't save me in the condition in which I was so that he could then just leave me in that condition. Oh, no. He saved me because he had the intention of changing me. See, imagine if you were to buy an old car. Uh, a 1956, and it's in poor, poor condition. Would you buy that car and then take it to your house and leave it out there in the driveway or in front of your car, in front of your house, and just let the elements and the rain and everything pour on top of it and just leave it as it is? No, if you were buying an antique car, it's because you want to fix it up. You want to repaint that thing. You want to take care of it. You want to baby that car. You want to restore it. That's what God does for us, only so much more. Because what you can do with an old car, let me tell you for sure, God can do a whole lot more than that with an old sinner. And he delights in doing it. Bible says in 2 Corinthians chapter 5 and verse number 17, Therefore, if any man be in Christ, he is a new creature. Old things are passed away. Behold, all things are become new. God saves us because he wants to change us. Perhaps you're familiar with the story of what is called the prodigal son. The prodigal son left his father and went away from his father, and he was a very, very wicked young man. But there was a turning point in that man's life, wasn't there? I'd like to read to you a quote from a book that is called Faith is the Victory, written by Buell KZ. And he writes this. The holiness of the prodigal son lay in his sense of sinfulness, while the sin of the boy at home lay in his sense of righteousness. This is what this is saying. The prodigal son who was saying, God, please be merciful to me. Father, I have sinned against heaven and against thee. Please forgive me. Accept me as one of your servants. His sense of sinfulness enabled his righteousness. Watch this. The pride, the self-righteousness of the older son is what led him into sin. You know, the, Jesus, while he was here upon this earth, one of the groups that he pointed out time after time after time, those Pharisees, they were the people that were self-righteous. Oh, they felt they were so good. They were such wonderful, godly people. And he says, woe unto you, Pharisees. Woe unto you, Pharisees. Do you know what God is looking for? A humble and a contrite spirit. That's who he can change. Notice what verse number 15 says. It says, who was before, pardon me, this is a faithful saying and worthy of all acceptation that Christ Jesus came into the earth to save, into the world to save sinners of whom I am chief. Did you realize that one of the only reasons that God came here to this earth, Jesus came to this earth, was to save us, to save you, to save me? He wanted to change us. 
That's why he saves us. He doesn't save us to leave us in the condition in which we found ourselves. No, he wants to change us. Could I just ask you to think about this? What is God still changing in your life today? What changes does God still need to make in you and in me to conform us to the image of Christ? Because that's his ultimate goal. He wants you and me to look just like Jesus Christ. And I don't know about you, but I'm sure I've got a few things that still need to change. And so the Bible says that God saved me, first of all, so that God could change me. But look at verse number 16. How be it? How be it for this cause? That, that means for this reason. I obtained mercy. This is why I got saved. That in me first, Jesus Christ might show forth all long suffering. That is, first of all, God saved me to change me. He wanted to do something in me first, okay? But that wasn't the end. That was just the first step. Look at the second step. The Bible says, for a pattern to them which should hereafter believe on him to life everlasting. You see, the first step was so that God could change me. The second step is so that others can be saved. Do you know why God saves us? He saves us, first of all, so that he can change me. But secondly, so that others can be saved. Oh, you see, God never intended for anyone to get saved, and then that's it. That's the end of the story. Oh, no, that's the beginning of the story. That's where the story first starts. There's a whole lot more to the story. There's so much more that God still intends for us to do. Sometimes people get saved and they think, okay, well, I, I'm done. Now, you know, I, I, I've completed my race. I've finished my course. I'm done. I have nothing else to do. <laughs> Guess what? You're just getting started. There's a whole lot more that God intends to do with you and through you. You are just on the first lap of the race. you got a whole bunch more laps you still need to run. See, God wants to change us so that then other people can be saved. Did you realize that when you bring another person to Jesus Christ, you are fulfilling one of God's goals for your life? Paul wrote in Romans chapter 10 and verse number 1, Brethren, my heart's desire and prayer to God for Israel is that they might be saved. After Paul came to know Christ as his personal Savior, his goal in life was that his own people should also come to faith in Jesus Christ. That was Paul's goal. See, God has a purpose and a plan. And my life can be a pattern to lead others to Christ. When I share my testimony and I tell people, hey, you know, I got saved as a little boy in a church in Mexico when uh, my parents were missionaries down there and I share my story with them and, and then they, they, they hear my story and they say, you know, if God did that for him, then maybe God can do that for me as well. My, my, my life, my story of transformation can show other people how that they can be transformed by God. I was once on a plane flying from Bogota, Colombia to Bucaramanga. And as I got on the plane that day, I, I put my suitcase up above. I had everything in there. My Bible was up there. I sat down, and, and after I sat down, I thought, you know, I really should get up and pull my Bible out and maybe read my Bible for a few minutes here on the plane. People were coming on, and so I thought, well, I'll, I'll wait for them to pass. And, and several people came by. All of a sudden, I, I saw this lady, very well-dressed lady, she was coming up, and she was kind of smiling at me. And as she got closer, she said, uh, Sir, excuse me, I have the middle seat. And so I stood up to let her sit down. And while I'm standing, I just quickly grabbed my Bible out of my bag, and I sat back down. When I sat down, she was taking care of some things, putting in some bags. And, you know, she had several things with her. And, you know, she was one of those ladies that if you were to see her, you would think, oh, she's probably the president of a company. The way she's dressed, the way she acted, you know, it was obviously a very well-to-do lady. And when she turned back around and she saw that Bible in my lap and I was reading it, she literally screamed. She says, ah! She said, you're a pastor? I said, uh, yes, ma'am, I'm, I'm a preacher. She said, oh, no. I said, well, can I help you? And she just started crying like that, pastor. Just boom, you know, the tears. And she says, 
I need God. I said, well, let me help you. <laughs> so for the next few minutes, I mean, you know, there's still people coming on. She doesn't care. I, I'm starting to show her from God's word how she can come into a saving knowledge of Jesus Christ and be saved. And, and she's listening to me, and she's just crying and crying and crying. I, I didn't know what was going on. And, uh, and I'm sitting there, and I'm thinking, wow, okay, wow, this is, this is unusual. And, uh, and, and, and then she prayed, and she accepted Christ as her Savior. We were already up in the air by this point. And, uh, and I, I just gave her a few moments to kind of, you know, gather herself because she, she, she was just, you know, she was in shock or something. I didn't know. Finally, she composed herself, and she said, I need to tell you something. She said, um, I was the pastor of a church for 18 years. She said, I, I never believed anything that the Bible says. I never did. She said, I had a friend who was a preacher, who was a pastor, and she told me that if I would become a preacher, that I could get a lot of money. I could make a lot of money being a preacher. And so I decided, okay, I'll be a preacher. She said, I just got the Bible and started reading stuff, and I'm like telling people what I read, and I didn't believe any of it, but I just thought that's what other people do too, and they obviously make lots of money, right, Pastor? And, uh, and so, you know, she, she, said, uh, she said, you know, I, I, I even wrote books. She said, I spoke in national conferences. She said, I was quite famous as a preacher. And after 18 years, I thought, you know, I don't believe any of this. And this is all a lie, she said, and I kind of felt bad for doing it, and so I just decided, well, I'll never do that again, and I just walked away. She said, but I'd never believed it. She said, but six months ago, my daughter went to a Baptist church in Bogota, and she came back one Sunday morning, and she said, Mom, Mom, I went to church today. She said, Mom, guess what? It, it is real. It's true. It's not fake like you said. I met some people today that told me how I can know for sure I'm on my way to heaven. And mom, I got saved today. And she said, I told my daughter, oh, please don't tell me you too. You believe that, ah, oh, that guy was just lying to you. He himself doesn't even believe it. She said, no, 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 mom. He really, really does believe it. I'm convinced they believe it. This is real. This is true. She said, and for six months, every day, my daughter's been saying, Mom, I'm praying for you. You need to get saved. You need to know the God of the Bible. He really is real. Mom, you need to know this. She said, this morning, my daughter brought me to the airport. She said, as we were driving to the airport, my daughter was crying. She said, Mom, if you die, if the plane falls, Mom, you're going to die and you're going to go to hell. And God doesn't want you to go to hell. He wants you to go to heaven. And mom, you, you need to get saved. Please, I'm begging of you. Would you please accept God as your Savior? You need to be saved. And she said, look, if God exists, then let him put a preacher beside me, and maybe then I'll believe. <laughs> yeah. She said, and when I got on that plane... And I looked over at you sitting next to me with a Bible open. I thought, oh my goodness, God is real. I need to listen. And that's why I said, I need God. Can I tell you this? Amen. Praise God. Why did God save me? So that he could change me. But secondly, so that others can be saved. See, this young girl, she didn't know. She didn't know that, that that day her mom was going to get saved. <laughs> we finally landed in Bucaramanga. She got off the plane. I mean, this lady was a mess. She was a mess. She's crying. Her mascara that was perfect when she got on the plane, she had rivers of black running down her face, okay? She did not look like the same lady, okay? There, there had been a change already. 
She sat down in her fancy dress, sat down on the floor of the airport, called her daughter, everybody in there waiting for their bags. They're all hearing this lady. She's crying and she's saying, you'll never guess what just happened. I told you that if God's real, he's going to put a preacher on the plane next to me. He did. He told me what you've been telling me. Hey, I'm getting on a plane. I'm going back home. I'm canceling my conference here. There's no way that I can talk to anybody today. I want to go with you to your church this next Sunday. Thank you. Thank you for never giving up on me. You see, the fact of the matter is, God saves us so he can change us. But secondly, he wants other people to get saved. Number three, so that God can be praised. Look, please, at verse number 17. See, the Bible says here, Now unto the king eternal, immortal, invisible, the only wise God, be honor and glory forever and ever. Amen. Paul wrote in the book of Philippians chapter 2, Wherefore God also hath highly exalted him, and hath given him a name that is above every name, that at the name of Jesus every knee should bow, of things in heaven, of things in earth, and things under the earth, and that every tongue should confess that Jesus Christ is Lord to the glory of God the Father. Why did God save me? So that he could change me. So that others could be saved, so that God could be praised. He is the only Lord of lords and King of kings. He is the only God who is immortal, invisible, the only wise God. He is the only one who deserves honor and glory forever and ever. He is the only one. In 2000, I had the opportunity to go to Ghana, West Africa, and I went to a little town called Trubadum. I went into this village and I was going house to house talking with people about the gospel. And, and in those houses, you don't have a door, you don't have a doorbell. You just walk in, you sit down in the lobby or the, the, the main room of the house and, and they come out and they bring you some water and they hand it to you and they say in Chui, they say Akwaba. And the response is Yasun, which means I accept your welcome. Akwaba means welcome. Here, let's try that. I'll say Akwaba, you say Yasun. Akwaba. Good job. You already speak Chui. You're fluent in it. I gave this lady, uh, this lady gave me a glass of water and I drank it and she says, why have you come? And I said, because God has sent me with a message for you. She said, oh, thank God. She said, did you bring the money? And I said, well, well no, uh, God didn't say anything to me about bringing money. I said, why, why do you say that? And she said, well, this morning I was praying and I, I said, God, if you exist, would you please send money to me? And I said, could I ask you, ma'am, why you're asking God for money? She said, well, yes, it's kind of sad. She said, three months ago, my husband died. And my, my husband's family thinks that I poisoned him. And, and I want money because I want to buy some medicine so that my children can take that medicine and die. And then I'll take the medicine and I'll die because I don't want to live anymore. And wherever he is, that's where I want to be because... I can't stay on this earth anymore. And I said, ma'am, God did tell me this. He wants you to live. He wants your children to live. He doesn't want you to die. God has a purpose for your life. And she said, really? I said, yes, God wants to give you eternal life. She said, oh, what is that? And so I showed her from the Bible, and that day she prayed and accepted God as her Savior. I went back 17 years later, and as I came to the church, now they had a church building. Before they had nothing. They had no group of people at all. 200 people came that Sunday morning. At the end, I was shaking hands, saying goodbye to everyone. And this lady came by and she said, do you remember me? And I said, well, I'm, I'm not sure. And she said, I'm the lady. You came to my house and you told me that God wanted me to live. Do you remember that? I said, oh, yes, I do. She said, now I'm a member of the church. I've been baptized and I help here in the church. And I want to introduce you to my daughters and my son. At that point, her children were in their early 20s. And she said, these are my two daughters and this is my son. And he's in a Bible school. He's studying to become a pastor. Why does God save me? So that he can change me. So that others can be saved. So that God can be praised. I preached this message at a church in Pachuca, Mexico. Standing in the back was a man who never came and sat down. He'd come in with his wife. His wife came in and sat down. He never sat. He stood in the back the entire service. At the end, as I was giving an invitation, he looked out at me and he kind of motioned like this. 
asking for me to go back there to him. I paused. I wasn't sure if perhaps I was misunderstanding something, and within a few seconds, he again made the motion for me to go back there. Finally, I went back to where he was, and the pastor was up at the front leading the rest of the, the end of the service. And he said, sir, were you serious when you said God wants to change us? I said, yes, sir. He said, this afternoon I was at my home. He said, I'm depressed, I'm discouraged, I'm finished with life. He said, there is no reason for me to live. He said, my wife was out shopping and I took up my, my pistol, I loaded it, and I was about to take my life when all of a sudden I heard my wife coming in the front door. And when she came in the door, I hid that gun underneath some newspaper there close to my chair. He said, and, and I decided that when she left later that I was going to take my life. And my wife came in and she brought in her things and she said, you need to come with me to church tonight. She started crying and begging me. She said, please come to church tonight. Please, I beg of you, this one time, would you please come with me? And he said, fine. He said, and on my way to church, I thought, okay, if God can change me, then I'll listen. But if not, I'm going home. And after she goes to bed tonight, I'll be taking my life. She, he said, sir, I need you to be honest. Can God really change me? I said, yes, sir, he absolutely can. I showed him from God's word how that God has changed others, how God changed David, how God wants to change us. That man fell to his knees there in the back. On his knees on the floor, he started crying. He was praying to God, asking God to save him, that God would change him, confessing that he was a sinner. When this happened, his wife noticed and came running back to the back. She knelt down next to her husband. When he finished praying and he stood, they embraced for a long time. And she said to her husband, I thought if you could come to church tonight, you would be a different man. She said, I really felt that I was about to lose you. He said, you have no idea how close you came to losing me today. That man and his wife continue to be faithful in that church. Amen. Why does God save us? So he can change us. So that others can be saved. So that God can be praised. Heavenly Father, thank you for being a powerful and mighty God. Lord, we do not come to a God that has eyes that cannot see, nor ears that cannot hear. We come to a powerful and mighty God. And Lord, tonight, today as we come before you, I pray that you would please help us to listen to your voice. With your heads bowed and your eyes closed, I'd like to ask you a question. How many here today would say, Brother Bill, I know that Jesus Christ is my Savior. I know that I've been saved. I've experienced that powerful transformation in my life, and I'm just so grateful to God that he saved me. If that's true, would you raise your hand? I'd like to thank God with you. Amen. 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 God has changed my life. Amen. Thank you. You can lower your hands. Now, maybe you're here this morning and you say, you know, the fact is, I don't know. If I were to die today, I'm not certain I'd spend eternity with God in heaven. I'm not certain that Jesus Christ is my Savior, but I would love to have his gift of salvation. I want Jesus to be my Savior too. And you'd say, please pray for me. Would you lift your hands? I'd like to pray for you this morning. How many here this morning would say, please pray for me. I need to be saved. I need Jesus Christ as my Savior. Thank you. Thank you there in the back. Thank you, ma'am. Thank you. I saw your hand. Anyone else? You'd say, please pray for me. I need to be saved. Thank you. I saw your hand. Anybody else? Please pray for me. The Bible tells us in the book of Romans, chapter number 3, for all have sinned and come short of the glory of God. The Bible says there is none righteous, no, not one. Every one of us is a sinner. Every one of us, every one of us is separated from God because of our sin. The Bible tells us in Romans 6, 23 that there is a payment for our sin, and that payment is death. The Bible says, for the wages of sin is death, but the gift of God is eternal life through Jesus Christ our Lord. Because of our sin, you and I are going to have to die. But the Bible also says that God has a gift for us, and that gift is eternal life. And that gift is possible because Jesus Christ paid your price and my price for our sin. The Bible says in Romans chapter 5 and verse number 8, but God showed his love toward us in that while we were yet sinners, Christ died for us. 
And then the Bible tells us that because he died for us, he's the only one who can save us. The Bible says, neither is there salvation in any other name, for there is no other name under heaven given among men whereby we may be saved. And so today, if you want Jesus Christ to be your Savior, I'd like to ask you to do the following. I'd like to ask you to pray a prayer right there where you are right now with your head bowed and your eyes closed and no one's listening except God. But right there where you are in your seat, would you just cry out to God and say a prayer like this? Dear God, I know I'm a sinner. I believe that Jesus died for my sins and he can save me. Lord, please forgive my sin. Lord, I accept you as my Savior. Lord, I need you to be my Lord and my Savior. I realize that no one else can do this for me but you. In Jesus' name I pray. With your heads bowed and your eyes closed, if you just prayed a prayer like that, asking God to save you of your sins, would you lift your hand so that I can rejoice with you? If you just prayed that prayer, would you raise your hand? I'd like to, pray. I'd like to thank the Lord for you. Amen. Very well, amen. Thank you. Now, maybe you're here this morning and you say, you know, Brother Bill, I have some questions about this. I'd like to talk to somebody. I want you to notice that Pastor Dan is up front. Our other brother is up front. If God has spoken to your heart and there is a question, there is someone you'd like to talk to about salvation, we're going to give you a time to do that right now. As the pianist continues to play, we're not going to sing in here this morning. But if God has spoken to your life, if in your heart, and you need to be saved, would you come up and find one of these men here at the front and say, hey, I need that. I need salvation. I need to know I'm on my way to heaven. Please don't wait. Please be the first one to come down the aisle. Please just come up here and talk to them and tell them that you need to be saved. That's why they're here this morning. And so that's what we're going to do for the next few moments. If you know the Lord is your Savior, would you please pray that God would help others to be saved even now? as we go into this special time. If God has spoken to you, would you just leave your place? Can I ask everyone to stand? Everyone to stand, please. With your head still bowed and your eyes closed and no one's looking around, if God has spoken to you and you need to be saved, would you leave your place and find your way here to the front? Find your way to talk to one of these men. No one else is looking, but we're all praying that God would speak to hearts this morning. Amen. This is your time. If you want to know Jesus Christ is your Savior, if you want to know that he, heaven is your eternal destiny, would you just leave your place and make your way here to the front? Speak to one of these two men. If you're a lady and you'd like to speak with a lady, we have several here that are ready to speak to you as well. In a moment, we're going to pray, but you need to know that the invitation is always open. So if today, in the next few moments, if right now you are just unsettled and uneasy and you know, you know you need to find out more about this decision, you need Jesus to change your life. You need him to save you from your sins just because we pray and things move on you need to make that decision in your life and 
I'm here, Pastor James is here, we've got men, ladies, who would love to talk with you after the service today. You come talk with Brother Patterson, but don't leave here today without making that decision in your life. What a great challenge today. Your life can be changed by Jesus Christ. No one loves you like he. No one's done for you what he's done for you. You either reject him or you receive him. I pray that you'll make that decision to receive him in your life today. And what a challenge for those of us who have. He's changed us. And what are we doing with it? Oh, what are we doing to share him with others? People we work with, we go to school, our neighbors, our family, do they see the change? Does he get glory in us? What a great challenge for us today. And, and I pray as God puts people in your heart and mind, Christians, that you'll do all that you can to, to do everything you can to point those people to Jesus. Thank you, Brother Patterson, for that message today. Let's close in a word of prayer, and then we'll have a few announcements. Lord, thank you for this day, and Lord, thank you for uh, the Apostle Paul and his transparency, and it's all for your honor and all for your glory, but you changed him, and Lord, I'm, I'm grateful there's not a man or woman that you cannot change, and we know that anyone that's in Christ is a new creature. And so, Lord, we want to pray for any man, woman, boy, or girl that's here today, maybe those that raised a hand, maybe they did pray, maybe they still have questions or they're thinking about it. I pray that they wouldn't leave here today without talking to someone personally about Lord, what it means to know you as Savior, what it means to put their trust in you. Lord, heaven and hell are at stake, eternal life. Lord, I pray that you would help them to humble themselves and say, yes, Lord. Today, we know that when we make that decision and repent and believe that, Lord, we shall be saved. Not might be, not maybe, but we shall. We're so thankful for that. You begin to change, change us. And Lord, for those of us who know you as Savior, thank you for the changes that you've made in us. And I know you're still working in us. You're working on me for sure. Lord, I pray that you would help us to now go and open our mouth and speak and share the glorious words of life with those who, who have never heard, all so that they might know you, so that you might be glorified. So, Lord, I just pray that you would continue to burn these truths in our heart today, and, Lord, all throughout the week, let it influence and change the way we live and change our lives. So, Lord, thank you. Thank you for your word and your truth, and thank you for this great message today. So, Lord, as we prepare to dismiss today, Lord, I know things going on, functions, meetings, Bible studies, so many things. Lord, we just pray that you'll be glorified. Pray that you'd bless our guests, Lord, for being here today and help them to have felt welcome. And we pray we'll have an opportunity to minister to them in the days to come. Lord, we just pray that you would uh, just get us home safely and, and use us for your glory and for your honor. We want to pray a very special blessing, Lord, on the uh, MIT group as they're here this week and as they're out in the streets and helping churches and ministries and sharing the, the truth of the gospel. Lord, let it be an encouraging time, beneficial time, and Lord, we just pray for them in a very special way. Lord, it's because of you we're here today. And we, we rejoice and we say thank you. Help us not to forget who it was that saved us and why you saved us. And Lord, I pray that in our lives we'll bring you glory and honor and praise. So God, we pray now that you would bless as we uh, make our way and as we dismiss. God, we love you and we say thank you. We ask all these things. In Jesus' name we pray. All God's people said, amen. amen. Let me give you two quick announcements before you go. Okay, number one. Uh, remember, guys, security meeting, and so if you'll meander your way over to this room to my right, your left, 